We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We want to welcome you again to the presence of the Lord. It is our prayer that our time together here will be a blessed one in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you. You've always been our God. Before the mountains sprout, sprouted, you've been a rock of age, refuge, a rock of ages. Now, Lord, we ask that by your Spirit, come and speak directly into our hearts and help us to love you more than we do before. We know that a day is coming, the day of wrath, the day of judgment, the day of darkness. But we ask that you help us to reconcile with you now that we are alive. So that when you come to judge the world, we will be those who we have eternal joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, be seated. I went. I want to first of all appreciate my church fathers and our vicar for this great opportunity given to me to share the word of God with us today. It is my prayer that the Lord will uplift his ministry more and more in Jesus' name. The topic of today is the great day of the Lord. Let us say the great day of the Lord. Zephaniah 1, verse 14 to 18 is a test. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasted greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wastefulness and desolation. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as a dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy readers of all them that dwell in the land. Praise the Lord. The book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3, 1, following, make us to understand that for everything there is a time and there is a season for every activity done on earth. There is a time to be born. There is a time to die. There is a time for peace and there is a time for war. You will agree with me that the day of death is more important than the day of birth. This world came to existence on the day God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit visited this world. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. After carrying that inspection, it was discovered that the earth was void. It was form, formless. It was covered with darkness and waters. There was water upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. That was the day this world was born. This earth, that was the day it was born. For those of us who celebrate our birthdays and fail to remember our death day, I want to tell us that so long as we were born, we will also die. 
Uh, we have our father in the altar, the Reverend Christian Omokoro, who is celebrating his birthday today. Today. Some years ago, he was born, and he's celebrating today. And uh, if you go to his Facebook wall, you will see there, I am plus one today. The truth is that he is not plus one today. He is just minus one today. Do you know why? Whenever we celebrate our birthdays, we say we are plus one. But in the real sense, we are minus one. We are getting nearer to our maker. For instance, if somebody has 120 years, and the person is celebrating 100 year anniversary, I mean uh, 100 uh, uh, year birthday, uh, it's minus what? Minus 100, right? Remaining 20. Is it not so? Fine. So it is not actually plus one, but it is minus one. So long as we were born, we also expect a day that we will live. The end of a thing is better, is more important than its beginning. The beginning is just an advent, but the end of it is what is going to determine the history and the legacy that will be left behind. This world came to an existence some time ago, and it will definitely come to an end. Why is this great day of the Lord coming? It is coming because Satan, the arch enemy of God, rebelled against God some time ago. In heaven, he rebelled against God when he was not Satan, when he was Lucifer. And his angels too, they were cast down. And God himself set a day aside, and that day is the day of judgment. And for every human being in this world, we are going to face that day. The Bible says in Hebrew 9.27 that it is appointed unto men to die how many times? To die once. And after that, judgment of God will come. Is there anybody here who is not going to face the judgment of God? Every single one of us, we are going to stand before the judgment seat of God to give account of everything we have done in the body while still in the flesh. We are going to give account. And this day is going to be a day of darkness. It is going to be a day that the sun will be afraid to shine. It is going to be a day that the birds of the air will know that something terrible is about happening. It is going to be a day that the moon will be so afraid that it will be afraid to come out because it is going to be an unusual day. But do you know that when Jesus will come, it, men will be so carried away that people will be marrying and giving in marriage. It, it's going to, for us who are humans, especially for those who are not watching, it is going to be every other day when we go to our market, especially the day the rapture is going to take place. A lot of people will be doing their normal thing. Those who steal, they will be stealing. Those who cheat, they will be cheating. Those in government, they will be planning how to steal millions to Switzerland. Those who do the work of bike biting, they will be going from one house to the other carrying news about or recharging their phones and be doing a proco on phone to call people, have you heard? They will be doing all that. Even those who are about giving up on God. Some, do you know that when Jesus will come, some, some ladies will just be defiling themselves for the first time. After receiving so much pressure for so many years, they will say, why not I just agree for this man so that I can get the job. As at then, the Lord will just come. Let's remember the story of the parable of the ten virgins. They were still virgins, but because they ran out of oil, that is how it's going to be. The five foolish virgins ran out of oil, and as at the moment they left, while they were there, the master came and took the five wise virgins. It is not because they had defiled themselves. This tells us that a lot of Christians are going to be left behind. Why? Because of unwatchfulness. Unwatchfulness. How many 
of us know how the day of the Lord is going to be? Let's look at the passage we just read. Verse 15, Zephaniah 1, 15. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, 16, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. It is going to be a day that those who feel so secured that there is nothing that can fall from the heaven that will shake their heart. It is going to be a day they will be very, very disappointed. Those who have shams and they feel that they are in charge of the world. All those cabal who feel that the destinies of the millions of Nigerians is on their palms. That day, they are going to be very, very disappointed. Because money shall fail that day. Wealth shall fail that day. Certificates, knowledge is going to fail that day. It is going to be like when a professor dies. All his certificates, what do you do with them? The best you can do with them is put them in the museum. So that when people go there, they will know that so, so person who is late, whose new title is late professor, late, late is going to be the title of every human being in this world. Late. No matter how much title you have, when they will write your name, it is going to be late doctor, late engineer, late ambassador, late excellency, no matter what. Late is an equal title for every human being that passes through this world, whether we like it or not. And when we leave this world, we are going to stand in the presence of our maker. A lot of us are in church, but we don't belong to church. We know where we belong. There are some of us, we do the things Christians do. We dance when they say we should dance. We give offering when it's time to give offering. We go to evangelism when it's time to go to evangelism. But right inside of us, we know that we don't belong here. I said on Thursday during service of songs, and I made a statement. I said some of us who are in church, we are here to hide in church, but we know that we don't belong here. Our mates, our true personality is in, in the shrine. It's in Ogboni, Amok, Irish Krishna. It's in Obojubele, uh, Okere Juju, any that is in my village. People are in different secret societies, but they come to hide in church. But that day, it is a day that all the security we get from all that, it is going to be useless. There are some, they don't need to belong to any human secret society. But even sitting here, they can travel to London and run business and come back. But that day, all that power is going to fail. There are lots of people in church today who are possessed with demonic spirits and they don't care about how much you preach. That day, everybody is going to care. That day is going to be a day of concern. It is going to be a day of darkness. It is going to be a day when the Babalawo, the witch doctor, will try his charm and the charm will fail. It is going, listen, it is going to be a day when the angel is going to pass through this world. The way an angel passed through Egypt and every firstborn child of the Egyptians died. It is going to be a day that we can never escape. The day of the Lord is coming. And do you know what? Even right now, there are people in this world who are telling us lies. Man has been programmed to listen to lies. It is not God who did the programming, but we have programmed our minds so that our consciences, even as much as as seared, as hardened as our conscience is, we don't want to listen to the truth. Let's open our Bibles. The episode that was read to us a while ago, it's talking about the day of the Lord. Verse 5, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 to 3. But of the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves, 
Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. It's going to come as what? As a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety. Today, go to churches across the world. What you hear is peace and safety. They tell you nothing is going to happen to you. Just so sit and go, you are saved. Especially in Africa, churches have been turned to shrines where people go and consult Satan and consult Babalawo. How many Babalawo we they ask their client, how do you live your life? They don't ask you. And that is how a lot of Christians feel God is. The new God of this generation is a God they feel that when you give God money, he throws his blessings and cares nothing about how we live our lives. It is a big lie. Today, it is about peace, peace, peace. In fact, it pains me for Nigerian Christians because there is so much poverty here. And the little money you have, you sow it into the life of a false prophet who collects your money and go and buy a private jet. Gives you empty promises. Tomorrow he tells you all you need is faith. Just build up your faith. So more you so more. A lot of Christians have been impoverished at the expense of their souls. It is dangerous for a man, so-called man of God, to rob you of your faith in Christ. Rob you of your possession. Rob you of your money. Rob you of your time in the name of program. And also rob you of your soul. It is painful. And do you know there shall be fight in hell? There shall be fight in hell. I remind Christians when I have the opportunity, there shall be so much fight in hell that when you see some of these geos in hell who collected your money and, told, and continue to tell you peace and safety, instead of telling you repent, someone reached me online one day and told me, I want to sow into your ministry. But the person ended up by saying, I know I am not saved, but I just feel like giving. I replied to the person, I told the person, I am not interested in your money, but in your soul. In your soul. In your soul. Because what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? There are people in the world who are telling us peace and safety. So long as you belong to this denomination, so long as you wear our bango, so long as you have the calendar of the man of God in your house, peace and safety, nothing will happen to you. When they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travel upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Nobody shall escape. There are some people today, they feel they are God. They are assistant Jesus Christ. But they shall be very, very disappointed on that day. I'm not talking to any particular person here. I am talking to the body of Christ worldwide. If it concerns you, please change. A lot of times, when the Bible says rebuke, and you rebuke with the word of God, they come after you. How dare you rebuke us? How dare you? Who are you? Who are you to open your mouth? But the truth is that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and everything that was therein. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. The earth is the Lord's. Nobody is assistant Jesus. Nobody is second God. But the wicked, those who feel so powerful, they will meet with the judgment of God. If you are a believer and you are passing through stress, please endure. Do what? If you are passing through trials, do what? Endure. Because we are going to face judgment on the last day. The judgment of God must surely come. It will definitely come. The world is becoming wicked and more wicked. Just yesterday, I saw, uh, either yesterday or two days ago, I saw a news headline of human beings who enslaved 400 children and used them as sex slaves and produced pictures from them. Last 
last month also, either early this month or last month, about 300 children were freed. Pedophiles. Children got lost. When they get lost, they keep them in a room and adults will be sleeping with them and videoing them. Video record them and sell these cassettes. Costly, thousands of dollars. This is the kind of world we are living in today. Some of the people that are supposed to speak for us, they belong to the crime in the secret. I have looked at the corruption in the world. Even in the so-called first world countries, U.S., in U.K., no human being can stamp out corruption from the world. Because the very ones that are supposed to stamp it out are the satanists in secret. Even some of the people you respect so much. In the night, they are the very people who run the affairs of the powers of darkness in high and low places. Some of the people you respect in church and call you. But the judgment of God is coming to this world. The wind of the fire of God will blow across this world and everything that is hidden shall be revealed. Don't get deceived. Nobody should deceive you. I'm talking to myself too. Because there are people who have risen like me but ended up shamefully. But it is better to die young than fall and never rise again. That is my constant prayer. And I tell my mom, 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 it is better for me to die young than fall and face shame and never rise up again. Because where we are going to is more important than what we are doing here and where we are coming from. Do you value your eternity? Do you think... I just opened my eyes after drinking a camel or eating a boo and start sounding like this. I know what is coming ahead of us. It is going to be very, very dangerous. Danger is coming. Let's open our Bible to Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 16. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 16. When I heard... My belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones. And I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up, when he cometh unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. When we hear the judgment of God, let us tremble. Some of us, we have no trembling in ourselves at all. No trembling, no fear of God at all. God wants us to serve him in fear. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. That is what the psalmist said. But some of us, no fear. It is as business as usual. If somebody has turned water into the loss of God and dilutes the judgment of God as he is presenting it, I tell you, it has nothing to do with God. If God could not retain Lucifer in heaven, he will not allow us to enter there with sin. If God did not retain who we call Satan today, I know when I'm talking, now he's angry with me. He's angry. If God did not retain him in heaven because of sin, he will never allow us to enter. We should not deceive ourselves. We know it is by grace. It is not by power, but having belief, would the belief change the way we behave? Faith without work is what? Now that we have received Christ, why is it that we are still killing people? Why is it that people are still flying and they say they are Christians? Why is it that they have refused to live or court courtism? Why is it that they are still using shams to kill people? Why is it that men are still sleeping around even if they have a beautiful wife at home? Why? If we have believed, and the belief has not changed us, it means we have never believed. And that kind of belief is called a dead one. How many of us are ready for the Lord? The Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye will see him. And all kindreds of the earth, even those who pierce him, they shall all wail because of him, even so. Amen. The day the Lord is going to appear, second coming of the Lord, it is going to be very, very terrible. It is going to be a day that people will weep. But the Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 16 
and 17 that we have just read. He says that when I heard about the judgment of God, rottenness, I fear, rottenness crept into my bones and I tremble. Why? I tremble because I want to res resolve to settle with God today. The owner of this world is coming. Let us resolve to settle with him. He's not coming as a baby. He's coming as a lion of the tribe of Judah. A lot of times we Christians, when we talk about the lion of the tribe of Judah, what comes into our mind is that Jesus Christ is a lion. He will protect us. But we fail to understand that a lion is the opposite of a lamb. A lion can tear into two. Jesus is coming as a warrior. He is coming with his eyes red. He's coming with a double-edged sword. And he's going to take and crush the kingdoms of this world so that his kingdom can be established here forever and ever. Let's be on our feet. We need to pray. As I'm talking to you now, I'm talking to myself. Because I know man generally is stubborn. The flesh is very, very stubborn. Father, Lord, we lift up our lives to you. Have mercy upon us. Help us to repent fully. Now that you are talking to us about your judgment, help us to make the best use of this opportunity. Instead of becoming angry, Lord, help us to absorb your rebuke. Help us to absorb your encouragement. So that that place you have prepared for us, we will not miss it. You rejected Satan. Despite all the golds and the precious stones, the emeralds, different kind of stones, precious ones you used in creating him, you threw him down. How much more are we that are made out of dust, honorary dust? Lord, help us not to make fun of this great opportunity, but to make the best use of it. Thank you, Lord. May these words not stand against us on the last day, but help us to live by them, so that on the last day we will have cause to glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, there is no need to clap. We just need to work on ourselves. God bless you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at rosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com God bless you.